The Syrian army and its allies, including the Lebanese militia Hezbollah, say that they have liberated the last major ISIL stronghold in Syria, the town of al Bukamo. The town is on the border with Iraq and was the terrorists' last major bastion after they were driven from the city of Deir ez-Zor. Russia's defence ministry recently noted Islamic State controlled less than 5% of territory in Syria, and that was before these last two major victories. And I can speak now to Max Abrams. He's the Assistant Professor of Public Policy at Northeastern University. Uh, good to have you on the line, Max. It, can we go this far? Can we say that this victory really does mean the end of ISIL in Syria? Well, the way I would put it is there's an end of the caliphate. The caliphate has been the main political raison d'etre of the Islamic State. Um, and I don't think that anyone could possibly say that the caliphate um, exists in any real fashion. Um, so this latest uh, battle uh, really signals uh, very much the end of the caliphate um, and, and, and therefore the end of, of the main uh, you know, political goal of Islamic State. But Islamic State itself is not dead. Um, there, you know, this is a group that managed to attract tens of thousands of fighters from scores of countries all over the world. And so there remain you know, ISIS members and former ISIS members in its stronghold of Iraq and in Syria. And of course, this is an international problem with uh, untold numbers of foreign fighters who have returned home, although not, as, uh, not quite as many as initially feared. Um, and so, yeah, that's the way I would put it, is, is the caliphate is, uh, is done. Does that suggest, then, that these small pockets of, of the terrorists who remain in, uh, in some of the villages, that it's, it's key to wipe them out? And, and if so, how long do you think that could take? Yeah, I mean, I would always recommend, if you, if you could have a clean shot at, you know, an Islamic State fighter in, in Syria or in Iraq, uh, I would take it. I mean, these guys are terrorists. Um, they are part of the worst terrorist group that we've ever seen uh, in, in world history. Um, and so we need to pursue them doggedly. Uh, I've seen uh, European leaders say essentially the same thing. Uh, we don't want these guys returning home. Uh, so the fight is still very much on. Uh, we need to keep the pressure on. We need to find them. And, and, and frankly, we may need to expand the targeting to include groups and splinter groups where the former ISIS guys are heading to next. Uh, for example, you know, some of the groups with slightly, you know, different names uh, in Idlib, for example, in Syria, uh, they harbor many of the same views, and I think that they too should be uh, fair game. And so uh, the pressure needs to be kept going, um, but we've done a wonderful job of reversing their fortunes, uh, especially in their stronghold. I sort of want to remain sceptical, given what we've seen over the last few years. I mean, do you think this is an ideology that if it isn't eliminated, and maybe it's impossible to eliminate, that it could just sit there, bide its time, and then we'll see it growing again in, in years to come? Well, it depends on what you mean by ideology. I mean, the, the, the Salafist ideology is very much alive. That's an international movement, which of course preceded Islamic State and will continue long after Islamic State. However, part of their ideology was also the concrete political aim of establishing the caliphate. I think that that dream has been set back, not irrevocably, but I think that, that fighters all over the world will really have to think twice about whether it's a good idea to try to establish a caliphate, given the fact that Islamic State ended up failing so badly. Al-Qaeda, for example, also believes essentially in a caliphate, in an emirate, um, but they, their approach has been slower. It's been, you know, more gradual to try to build up more local support in order to achieve it over time. Uh, so I think that uh, that approach will probably gain some resonance as Islamic State continues to get crushed. If we look at a Syria without 
the terrorists, certainly in significant numbers. What will that mean for the country? What will it mean in terms of the civil war there? Is it likely to end? I think that that, that that region and that country will remain unstable for the foreseeable future. Uh, Islamic State is one of many militant groups in that country. Uh, viewers could just do a you know, Google search for uh, Idlib, for example, or any other search engine, look at Idlib and you'll see uh, it's a highly, you know, radicalized area with uh, HTS, the Al Qaeda umbrella group, uh, including, uh, you know, Nusra, uh, which which leads it uh, under various aliases. Um, but yeah, I mean, the the, the government uh, basically sees no possible negotiation uh, with the with the Salafist rebels, and the same is also true in terms of how the rebels regard, you know, what they consider to be the regime. Uh, and given that, I think that the civil war will continue. But the fact that Assad will remain in Damascus, uh, you know, it, he is going to stay there. So that is no longer in doubt, whereas that wasn't true, say, a couple years ago. Uh, so I do think that Assad's power, the Syrian government's power, is expanding throughout the country. But I don't expect him to have all of the country under wraps because there still remain uh, you know, tens of thousands of people prepared to, to fight against uh, the Syrian Arab army and its militia. Max, been good to speak to you. Appreciate your views. Max Abrams, my guest, Assistant Professor of Public Policy at Northeastern University.